Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You already know it's your girl Tip Top. And I know y'all wondering, like, girl, how to do a fill-in, how to do a fill-in. You always showing us how to do a full set. But sis, I need to know what to do when they come back. Don't worry, girl. I got you. I got you. So for a minute, I actually stopped doing fill-ins because it, it became an issue changing the design. And y'all know your girl work with colored acrylic mostly. But now that everybody has kind of transitioned into getting nail art, it has made it a little bit easier. But long story short, I'm finna show y'all what you gotta do, okay? Boom. The first thing you gotta do, girl, that old design has to go. So right now I am taking a cer yeah, ceramic coarse bit. Well, not right here. I'm taking a ceramic coarse bit and I'm pretty much fouling off all the design. What I'm doing right now is get rid of any lifting. So if you have any lifting, you know a lot of times they really just go with a nail nipper like this and just nip it off. But what I like to do first is go behind it with a drill bit and kind of pre-cut the lifting off first. That way when I do this step, it's not pulling the rest of the nail off with it and making the lifting worse. So you really want to try to do that first step first because it'll kind of help prevent the lifting from spreading instead of just going straight in with the nip nipper and then right now i'm just checking to make sure there's no lifting and then i could proceed with my normal steps so you really want to make sure when you push the cuticles back i didn't show it here because as y'all can see my client has no cuticles like it's gone it's nothing there so i'm going ahead with my fine sanding band and just etching her nail plate but also etching that old acrylic to make sure that i get that little tiny lifting off y'all know how sometimes it just be like a little flaky around the cuticle area i'm fouling that off too Y'all make sure y'all do this part good because a lot of times fill-ins, why I say fill-ins like that? Fill-ins barely last anyway because especially if the person that had to sit on for at least a month and then they come back like, hey girl, I want to fill in. Like girl, I was supposed to see you two weeks ago. So make sure y'all do this part right um, just because you really want to make sure it lasts. You don't want to do the fill-in and then the next day they have a nail pop off. Because right now I'm going in with something with a little bit more grit. It's the Kiara Sky little tiny um, sanding bands and the little tiny mandrel. It's so tiny. It's perfect for toes. But I really just got it because my other sanding band was too fine, I feel like. And I needed something with a little bit more teeth to it. A little bit more bite. A lot of people will say that this step is optional me i don't like to skip it because it be dust flying everywhere and the alcohol just really get rid of that dust so i like to use the hydrator bunder whatever your brand calls it i'm using my too cute brush this brush is 100 percent kalinsky y'all and it's so soft you can definitely tell the difference between brushes like um i don't like using no stiff brush get that away from me so i'm using my too cute brush you can use code tip top at checkout if you want to save some money if not then hey you ain't got to use it so right now I'm just going ahead and priming the nails. Make sure you double prime just because that first layer low key gets absorbed by the nail plate. And then you want to go ahead and put that other layer on top because primer is like a like a double sided tape situation. It's very sticky. So if you let it dry out, not saying that it still won't stick, but it won't stick as well. And I'm also using two cute ombre white because that's what we use for her full set so of course that's what we're going to use for her fill in now whenever you guys doing a fill in most of the time all you have to do is just fill in that back space by their cuticle but sometimes depending on how rough your client is you may have to apply some acrylic by the free edge slash the nail tip because it could just got have gotten thinned out over time especially if they're wearing their sets for a month. Also, you may have to do some type of rebalancing. If the person's nail has grown way more than the next person, you may notice that like, oh, okay, their apex is way too far down. During that first step when you're taking off the old design or artwork, you may have to file that previous apex area down to make room for a new apex just because 
you have to balance the nail out. You can't just keep building on top of the old apex. Now nah, you got to file that down and then make a new apex just because your apex always needs to be by the free edge of the client's natural nail because that is where you glued on the artificial nail tip so that is the stress area and tend to be the first area to break so keep that in mind <laughs> So with this client, as you guys noticed, she didn't really have a, a large grow out. So I don't need to rebalance. All I have to do is a simple fill in. Whereas with this nail where I cut off um, lifting, I do have to do a little bit more product. So here I noticed I'm like, dang, I just picked up a small amount thinking I was just doing, you know, how I was with the regular nails, forgetting that I have more room to cover on this nail because of the lifting I cut off. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and blend out this product and then just simply add some more. Like a lot of times people get nervous when they don't follow a strict plan, but y'all like it's nails. It's not that big a deal. You can always add more. Your client not going to be like, oh my gosh, she was supposed to do a 3B method, but she did five. I'm not coming back it's not that serious do what you gotta do to get the nail done and that's that A lot of people struggle with the cuticle bead. I know I did when I first started off. The key is to not place the bead directly on the cuticle. Don't do that. Place the bead where that pre-existing acrylic is and slowly nudge the acrylic forward. And then after that, girl, just leave it alone because it's honestly going to go into the cuticle on its own. Gently push forward and start blending the the bottom of that bead down into what you already have and once you look up the bead really gonna flush itself out you really don't have to overthink it once you overthink it girl that's when it go downhill So obviously, if you're doing a fill-in, when it, whenever it comes to the reshaping part, all you're doing is following the shape you already did on the full set. But let's just say on the full set, you wasn't completely happy. Or over time, her shape doled out. Just make sure you keep your file straight using the 8080 or 180, whatever you like to use. I Me mean, personally, I got to do the 8080 girl because I don't want to be filing all day. All right, and now I'm just buffing the nails. I didn't always used to do this, and sometimes I still don't do this, but if you plan on doing nail art, definitely don't skip this step, okay? Don't skip it. So, boom, we have some Extendo Almonds, which isn't common, but she still eats down, period. For her design, she did give her get her design off Pinterest, so all I did was recreate it. It's not exactly like the picture because we had to alter some of the stickers that was on there, but you girl still did what I had to do. Now I'm using Bloomin' Gel. This particular Bloomin' Gel is from, what is it from? D&D. &D. This black polish is from 2Q. It's their blackout polish and it's so one coat. I really don't have to do a second coat. And one thing about me, I'm not doing a second coat, period. If it's not one coat, I can't use it, babe. Sorry. We, we, we're prioritizing time over here. Time is money. Now all I'm doing is just doing these blooming Gel Dots with this little brush that I got from Nail by Honey. Honey Nail Supply here in Atlanta, Georgia. And now I'm following... Oh, y'all, that's my face. Please excuse that, but I got to see. I'm following the French design style that she showed me on a picture. The style was kind of like this oval french it wasn't deep french it wasn't super pointy french nah it was just like this so that's how i did it and honestly if i'm being completely 100 with y'all french look like this look better with almond stilettos type of nails Now, y'all know your girl can draw a little bit. I could do a little something, something, a little one, too. But it's not always preferred whenever it comes down to just the image being super sharp. 
But whenever you're doing super long nails, sometimes those stickers just don't be proportioned to the nail. So it kind of looks awkward. So I had to sit here and draw these Playboy bunnies, which I'm not mad about because, y'all, if, if you don't use your skills, you're going to lose them. And I haven't drawn anything in so long. So I'm glad she challenged me because they end up coming out so dope. We end up doing a sticker for the chrome heart design, though, just because I tried to draw it. Uh-uh, girl, it was so fat. It was just not, it was, it, it, it did not look sharp at all. So we used a sticker for that, which I'm not mad about either because it looked bomb. Another tip I can give you guys when drawing designs, put a matte top coat down first and it'll help your lines not bleed. So that's a super helpful tip. And now all I'm doing is top coating with glossy top coat. This is from Too Cute. It's super shiny, super glossy, and it's super stain resistant. And yeah, that's pretty much the design, y'all. If y'all like this video, make sure you leave a comment down below. Like your girl, share your girl, and I'll see y'all in the next one, period.